Welcome to SBCA's Lumber Connection Podcast, where we discuss today's market and explore tomorrow's trends. Here's our host, Molly Butts. Hello and welcome to Lumber Connection. It's the week of May 8th, 2023, and I'm in the studio with my regular experts, Justin Binning and Ken Timmons. Both Justin and Ken are a part of American International Forest Products, or AIFP. Welcome to the podcast, gentlemen. Hey, Molly. Thanks, Molly. <laughs> How you guys doing today? Good to see you. Well, we did actually just get to see each other in person, so that was fantastic. Good to see you both in Nashville at our most recent regional open quarterly meeting. It was a cool meeting. Lots of people showed up. Yeah, one of our biggest turnouts yet. So if you haven't been, be sure to sign up. But I think without further ado, let's just get right into business. Uh, how's the lumber market been looking for the last couple of weeks? Really, it feels like kind of a continuation, I think, from where we left off last time. Overall, kind of softness throughout the South in terms of pricing and it's just readily available product. So I would say that the supply is slightly outstripping demand. Most everybody's just in this just-in-time buying mentality, which is, we've been saying we sound like a broken record. So no change in the style of purchasing. I think the overall sentiment for spring has definitely been tuned down. I think people are still feeling good and there's decent business out there, but there's just still this like a lot of uncertainty and just a very kind of wait and see approach. And I think overall business is definitely down a bit across the nation. It doesn't really seem to matter where you're sitting. It's definitely, there's less business, but business is still okay. But again, I think the inventory management style has changed. And again, we're in this just-in-time mentality in terms of purchasing. So there's no fear of getting product and there's no necessarily fear of the price. So yeah, I just, I think we've established some trading ranges here. I don't see a ton of volatility either one way or the other throughout the, probably the remainder of the year. And I think this is kind of the new the MO of 2023, but we, so we move through this first quarter into the second, like this is how we're going to, this is what you see is what you're going to get, I think. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's where we're at. I will say the stress grade does seem to be more plentiful and I'm seeing better values pop up in relation to, to number one and number two grade. feels like that yeah. spread has been reduced. So I think that's a good thing for those that are needing the stress grade material. We talked the upper grades, we've definitely seen a price be condensed from, of course, where we were. And again, it's, I feel like most people can get what they want when they want it um, at a very fair, reasonable price right now. So, okay. uh, and I would say the one standout that's continued to hold on there has been two by 12. Two by 12 has continued to kind of grind higher and higher each week. We may have hit the plateau there. We shall see, but as weather improves in the South, logging gets better, wide lumber gets produced much easier. So Okay. We may be finding a settling out there on that, on the two by 12. And we'll see what, what comes of that over the next couple of weeks in terms of pricing. All right. Ken? Here's my take, Molly. My whole thing lately, everything I'm focused on is all about mastering my morning routine, right? How do I make the day as perfect as I can before it even gets started? One thing that we do every day on the trading floor, there's how many of us are there, Davey? 44. 34 traders. Okay. Varying businesses, coast to coast, international trades. Every day at 6.30, we have a morning meeting where we talk trends, market info, opportunities, the whole show. And there is one word this morning that got used by three or four different traders speaking about the market. And that word was saturated. And that's okay. just what it feels right now. There's just a, there's a abundance of lumber throughout really most sectors of the business. Mills have it, not any crazy skies falling mentality, but they've got wood to sell. Customers are bare looking at the pavement in their yard. Reloads seem to be somewhat filled throughout the supply chain. Just It's just a little saturated. And to Justin's point, business is good, but it's not emotionally euphoric. But business is good and it's out there. We've actually been trading pretty actively in the last, I'd say, five or six trading days. And personally, today has been a very active day throughout the West. Green species are trending up. California is waking up after that long, wet winter we had. That momentum is is providing a little extra demand for dry species, which are in general kind of trending off gently. So not every product's moving in unison. There's lots of substituting going on, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago before the OQM. 
but it's interesting. And I would just say, just like our morning meeting at 630 every day, saturated. So I did read something somewhere along the line in the last day or two that there was maybe a little less production coming out of Canada, but that doesn't seem to be striking fear in anybody. Do you guys have any comments on that? Yeah, no, it's and that's kind of been the MO, right? I mean, it just, nothing seems to spook the herd, right? Whether, and you talk about, there's 27 uncontrolled buyers currently in the Alberta province. Oh, wow. Uh, and there's... Yeah, I don't know, another 80 that are quote unquote controlled. Right. So, I mean, Canada is literally on fire. And yeah, we want. Right. And, and the curtailment notice have, have really, again, there, there doesn't seem to be a catalyst that creating any sort of sense of urgency with getting the buyer out of the current mentality that they are in. And again, I think it's, I go back to what we came out of over the last few years, which is kind of this desensitization. It's like, if you could make that out of that, what are you going to be scared about now? So it's just, it's like, hey, we're going to manage our inventory a certain way. We're going to keep our cash in our pockets versus necessarily out on the yard. We're going to buy what we need to when we need it. And that's how we're going to, we're going to go about our business. And that's the mentality. And with the current supply, where it is versus where we're at with home starts and multifamily business. Again, it's just slightly outstripping that. So Man. there's no, I don't know what's going to change that or what, it, but right now that's where we're at. And I think for the foreseeable future, that's where we're going to be at. Again, we've got a lot of other economical factors that are at play sure. that are also keeping yeah. people in that emotional state that, that are going to be very conservative with their purchasing. So well, and I think it might have been about a year ago from here, or it may have been a little more than a year, but I'm not sure. We were talking about all of the additional mills that were planning to come online or addition to current mills that were coming online. I don't know that much of that is actually currently running, but do you think that may be having some impact on sort of less fear in the market since we have more board feet coming online or already there? It might have some factor. Ken can obviously speak out of the West, but I don't think much has changed out of the West. If you talk Washington and South through California, yeah, I-5 corridor, what you see is what you get. Canada, we're going to continue to see less product out of Canada. And that's yeah. going to be, that'll continue over the years, but there's not a lot more left to be lost. And you're going to continue to see a, a growth in the U.S. South. Tremendous growth, yeah. billions of feet over the next few years. And that is quietly happening. Molly, to your, your point, it's, but it's not necessarily advertised, right? It's not breaking news. It's going to make random links or the front page of Business Insider. It's just quietly kind of added. And even so, I've heard that there's some mills that have cut production quietly over the last couple of weeks due to where we're at in, in market and conditions and overall pricing. Because the cost to manufacture and be profitable in the U.S. South, as I mentioned, I think last, last two weeks ago, has gone up tremendously over the last decade. And to where they need to be profitable, it's a much bigger number than it used to be. And so, again, we continue to add production at this pace we're at for building. Something's going to give uh, on the mill side. It has to, because a lot of these mills aren't going to, they just can't run for extended periods of time yeah. unprofitably. It just doesn't work, yeah. right? So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. Now, obviously, if we get interest rates lower and we're, there's no fear of world war and inflation's down at 2% or 3% and gas prices are $3 a gallon or two fifty. That'd be lovely. We can shift momentum very quickly because the underlying need for housing has not changed. We've been talking about it for years now. It's no secret. We are underbuilt as a nation and yeah. we've got a lot of people that need homes. Yeah. Unfortunately, the affordability factor is not there right now. It just isn't. Yeah. So we get that under control. Gosh, no problem. We could be doing two million starts. Easy. Plus. That'd be nice, right? All right. I want to shift gears just a little bit here. We talk a lot about what's happening and, you know, what's going on. I have a more direct question to ask both of you. What's something you wish your buyers knew? What do you wish your buyers knew? How stressed out I am yeah. every day. Yeah. <laughs> how, hard, how hard we're trying to help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, I don't know. I wake up at 3 a.m. I mean, <laughs> well, they don't care because yeah. they're up at 3 too. It's yeah, exactly. Up, but uh, oh, no, I just went yeah. waking up in the middle of the night thinking about lumber. That's a really good question, Molly. I would say, uh, I've, and 
varying degrees here because I'm very lucky and thankful to work with some remarkable people who are wildly considerate and good people. And I'm extremely thankful and I know they're listening and I love you guys. But I would say in general, I wish more customers understood that if you have someone that you trust and you can openly communicate information, it will provide a greater outcome for everybody, right? Some people, for whatever reason, hide their cards and they're maybe skeptical of sharing information, which is understandable, but it's really anyone that you can trust is going to try and do the best they can for you. And the more open and you can share, it's just going to save your company money in the long run, personally. The scope and scale of vendors used to, right? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people think, well, if I get 10 quotes, that's better. And what happens when you approach business like that, like we are a big industry, but we're also very small and tight knit and everybody kind of knows it's like, oh, I've seen that inquiry 15 times. Like, I don't even want to quote like, cause I don't get any feedback or this and that. And so you get, it kind of hurts a buyer at the end of the day because everyone can see that like what they're doing and you know, how many people see the inquiry and turn some potential good suppliers off. And now you don't even realize you're not actually getting a good deal because eight of them aren't even quoting you. A little bit of a, is that like a little bit of the boy who cried wolf syndrome of like, well, we're just going to keep asking and never taking you up on it. And therefore it's not worth the time to eventually look at it. Same for us from a customer standpoint with our mills, like our mills want feedback. They want to see where they're priced in the market. And the way we're able to do that, one, we prove it with sales. And then we prove it with feedback or firm offers from our customers. But a lot of times it's hard to get them from customers. So again, it's to Ken's point, it's a style and uh, it's fine. It's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just point, making a point that it doesn't always serve your, you as well as I think you think it does. Yeah. Anyways, and to Ken's point, you have two or three trusted guys with partnerships with mills that you know you like. That's how you end up getting the best deals on lumber, not sending it out right. to 10 different people because you think, well, if you got 10 people looking at it, we all got to get it pretty much from the same spots. Right. <laughs> or it's just these guys own some wood that got on the ground. That's great. But anyways, it, uh, I see it hurt more than it helps, I yeah. guess, in that situation. But yeah, this reminds me a lot of our conversation with Larry Dix at BCMC. I mean, I think he was very vocal about having that communication with your folks and trusting, having a trusted relationship. So I, this feels very familiar and I think good for us to reiterate again today. So I appreciate your answers on that. I mean, I would uh, you know, how much we love our customers, 10 touch on sure, that. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, I mean, especially what we went through and uh, this last three years with product availability and everybody's scratching and biting. It's yeah. nice to, those relationships, good times, bad times, very meaningful to us and our industry and our business. So thank you to our listeners yeah. and customers. And yeah. if we're not doing business with a lot of the people that do listen, we're here if you need us and we're glad to shoot you straight. Yeah, I do. I appreciate our listeners too. I'm glad you guys have said that a couple of times today, actually. We had a couple of folks come up to us at the OQM and say how much they appreciate the podcast and listen to you guys. Got some fans out there, so it was good to hear as well. And as I guess as we head off today, I just, I think we'd love to give you guys a chance of what can our component manufacturers look for in the next couple of weeks while we navigate this sort of new normal? I think the, uh, I don't, again, I don't see a lot changing in terms of the trend. I will say on a historical average, when you look at some of the pricing on Yellow Pine in particular, we are getting down into some levels that have been pivot points. So I would take note of that. I also think we're getting close to some levels where mills have to make some decisions in terms of running. So that could affect, obviously, availability and product. Again, I don't see a ton of downside right now with where we're at with the majority of pricing and lumber overall. And uh, yeah, I think it's, again, hearkening back to two weeks ago, it's a good time to, you can take advantage of some good deals. You can throw some offers out there and have your guys work for you see the best you can buy it and, uh, and keep going. But uh, I also don't wouldn't send a recommendation that you need to buy 120 days worth of lumber right now either. I think that the way that lumber is being tri- purchased, I think is, is working right now in the marketplace and it's keeping prices stable with limited volatility, which is what I think people have been hearkening and wanting for a long time. Yeah, it does feel there is a certain amount of stability going on right now. I was just having that conversation with my husband at lunchtime. So yeah, Ken? Well, I'd just say it's the macro market is out, the micro market is in. 
right? I think to yeah. Jamie's point, we're not going to see any tidal wave in either direction of price trends. What we will see is quick moving markets that are smaller in magnitude and a lot of people on all sides of the ball, some level of confusion. I think uh, prices are in discovery mode and the only way to find them is to participate. So with that, I think people are going to be catching the market more often, small purchases, keeping kind of one toe in the water, making sure it doesn't get too cool or too hot. I don't expect many cannonballs, but to Justin's point, there's a lot of things going on right now with fires, with some mill curtailments where there are, this is the time of the year with the right factors where catalysts could appear. So make hay while the sun's shining. The sun gets really hot sometimes, hay catches on fire. So, well, we are out of kind of normal rhythms, right? It's like we had kind of a, a early first quarter kind of run and we were expecting kind of a busier spring and we haven't had it. So maybe it's yeah. a late spring, early summer, right? We see another push. Non traditional. Yeah. Trend right. this year. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think that with that, we'll wrap up our episode for this week. Justin, Ken, thank you so much for your continued expertise and enthusiasm. As always, I've enjoyed our time together. I'll be a brief and look forward to the next installment of Lumber Connection. Us as well. Thanks for having Thanks us. Forward. See you soon. Thanks, guys. This has been a Lumber Connection podcast by SBCA. If you have a question you'd like a guest to answer on a future podcast, send it to podcast at sbcacomponents.com.